creating conversations that you can always share. That's what we do on Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. Episode number 430 is with legendary author Mark Greeny. Hey, Arrow. I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Always excited to read one of your books because it gives me the opportunity to have that edge of your seat without leaving my seat. And, and, and you, you, you create movies in my imagination. Well, that's fantastic. I I kind of write cinematically, and I've learned to do that over the years, and I think that adds something to the story. So it's nice to hear that uh, you see it that way. Do you do you hear music when you're writing? Because I mean, if you're going to write in that in that you know direction, I mean, I would have to have that bum 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 going in the background. You know, I've tried that, and it didn't really work for me. I just listened to white noise. I, I listen to the sound of rain in my headphones when I write. Yeah. But I've, I've always thought, like, what if I get a real pulse-pounding soundtrack going back there? But then I just find myself listening to the music too much. I think it's an excuse for me to to um, procrastinate. Um, but, yeah, theoretically, it seems like that would work. But for me, my, my brain just needs, uh, you know, dead dead air around me. Have you ever tried any of that um, frequency music? Like mine is 528. That's where I can really get into the creative element. I, I've done that to sleep. And, yeah. and it's been, you know, like the, specifically to sleep. But uh, I haven't done it for writing. I, I, I should play around with that and see if... I'm always looking for some sort of trick to make this easier. (laughs) Well, the new book is called Sierra Six. I mean, it's another gray man novel. I mean, dude, what what Court Gentry does in this, you're taking him back to his roots. What was that like as a writer? Because continuity's got to be spot on. Yeah, you're exactly right. And that was a danger. I I find myself just sort of like wandering into minefields all the time with my writing. And I didn't really think of that through... I, I always wanted to go back and tell an origin story, but I thought the problem with that was, well, everybody knows your hero is alive and kicking in the present, so where's the tension? But I, then I thought, like, what if I come up with something that happened in the past that uh, affects things that happen in the present? So I ended up with two 80,000-word novels that are all woven together as one. And there was a lot of going back to earlier books because I'll, I'll be like, did I say that he was never in Egypt? You know, he needs to be, he needs to have been in Egypt, you know. And there's a, there's a million little things like that you try and get right for the continuity. And if I if I made a single mistake, I will probably get an email today about it from a from a fan. But hopefully I didn't. Yeah, but don't you love the way that they, they keep us in check, though, those that that listen or those that read our stuff? It, it's like they'll call you out on it. Oh, they'll absolutely call you out on it. And I found myself starting to write just to stop the uh, the email. So I would put in more detail or exp- over-explain things so somebody didn't say, well, why didn't he take the flight from Denver, you know, or, or something. And then I realized, well, that's not really adding to the story. That's just me trying to cover my butt for, <laughs> for, for, for those emails. So I, I've, I've, now I just take the slings and arrows as they come and, and do my best. Well, you add kind of a twist this time around, kind of a ghostly twist. I don't want to be a spoiler here, but, but there's kind of a twist to it this time. Yeah, for sure. Um, basically, the, the, the past timeline, there's some blowback from it that affects things in the present. So uh, court sees somebody that he thought was long dead, and the fact that he's not dead is only bad news. And it's a very personal story for the series in ways that uh, not many of the books are. Um, the thing that happened in the past was very tragic to court and has affected him throughout his life. So he really wants to make amends for it. So you literally have two different um, picking time bombs in this in this story from the past and from the present, and everything kind of weaves together at the end. So I, I know for a fact that, that you love to really do your research, and you do your show prep in a huge way. What was it like to this time around, since you're going back to go forward? Well, I did a lot of research on where we were in the global war on terrorism 12 years ago, because this takes place along the past timeline takes place along the Afghanistan, Pakistan border and involves CIA paramilitaries. And in the present, it takes place in India. And I, I go to locations as much as I can, but with COVID, it was a nightmare. I tried to get in on a tourist visa and then I tried to get in on a business visa and then finally it just wasn't going to happen. But I, I made friends with a woman in Mumbai who's a writer herself, and she did a lot of location uh, research and was on the ground and sent me pictures and all that to, to get the details right. But uh, ordinarily, I think I've been to 36 countries doing research for books, and I, I go uh, whenever there's no global pandemic preventing me. 
Do you ever get into one of those situations where you are taking notes and stuff like that? Because uh, I, I know that in, in Charlotte, if you if you take pictures of the uptown area, they start watching you to find out if you're some sort of spy. Do you run into that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've gotten myself in trouble before. <laughs> um, twice it's been with Americans overseas, I like take, taking pictures outside the the U.S. consulate in Paris. You know, they came over and were rough, roughed me out of there. Um, and I, it was a lesson learned, but yeah, no, I was down in, uh, gosh, where was that? Guatemala and had a run in with the police because I was trying to do some location research and taking pictures. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's reasonable to wonder what this, this guy is doing. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I don't begrudge them for it, but I do try and get as much as I can without, uh, you know, getting in trouble. Yeah, that's only happened to me one time, but boy, they, they, they use sharp words and they, they use actions in the way that are threats <laughs> because, I mean, they, they want that camera. They want the they want everything inside it. Yeah, they, they're, they're trained to stop you from doing things like that, so that, that's what's trained into them. A, a buddy of mine, Brad Taylor, um, who's a really great thriller writer, he was actually arrested by the secret police in, in an African nation um, for taking pictures and asking questions near their special forces school. And he spent several hours in custody. So during uh, uh, Sierra six in writing it, did you have to do anything like you've done in the past where you, you took stunt driving courses? I mean, cause you do, you, you write in a way to where I'm, I'm feeling what you were experiencing. Yeah, well, that's great. I, yeah, I, I've learned scuba diving and I became an avid scuba diver because I used it in the books and I took stunt driving courses cause I used that in the books. Um, I got to fly backseat in an F-18 fighter last year. That's not in a Gray Man novel, but it's in, in another book that I'm doing for research. For this one, um, I just did some shooting and some, you know, talked to some people about medicine, talked to some people about uh, certain types of skydiving that, you know, civilians don't do. And it was, uh, you know, just put together with knowledge that I'd had from researching other books as well. This morning on iHeartRadio, I I took on the challenge of captive versus captivating. When you write a series like this, the Gray Man novel series, are you captive to the series or are you just like we are? We are captivated by it and we can't let it go. So therefore, we always get something from it. Well, I yeah, that's a great question. I have kind of designed the series to make it captivating to mm-hmm. me. Um, I, I don't have to have every one of my characters in each book as far as like, like your heroes in every book, but there's some series where, you know, there's 10 or 12 supporting characters that, that for some reason are in every single novel. And I think that would be very limiting because you sort of have to tell a, the same type of story. And so I've, I've gone out of my way not to do that. I've also gone out of the way to change my hero's relationship with the CIA and his relationship with his love interest and all these things to, to keep it fresh. I mean, I, and I want it to be fresh for the reader, but, you know, selfishly, I want it to be fresh for me, too, so I can keep cranking them out. <laughs> the Gray Man on the big screen, do you go in there and, and you, you watch it through the writer's eyes, or do you get to go in there and be a real person? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm going to find out. I'm 99 percent sure I'll write it as the writer's. I read it, watch it as the writer's eyes. Yeah. I read the uh, shooting script last year as they were filming it, and could see everything that happened. And it's almost like when you're a writer, that when you read the screenplay, that's your payoff. Like seeing the actors do these things is going to be great, but like reading it on the page, <laughs> I feel like I've almost feel like I've already seen it. And it's uh, you know, it'll certainly be exciting for it to come out, but. Um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm a, the, the books will always be the same. The movies will always be the same. The screenplay is fantastic. So I'm, I'm happy to see, see it come out. Oh, I hope I get to talk to you before it does so that I can get the real excitement after you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. Absolutely. Dude, come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Arrow, thank you so much. It's, it, you've been uh, with me for a long, long time, and I really appreciate it. You bet, man. Will you be brilliant today, okay? All right, you too. Take care.